seven things that shock the narcissist to their core. The narcissist wants you to believe that you cannot affect them, as though no matter what you do they will show no effects or changes, as though they're untouchable, and they're not able to be punished or criticized in any way. But the reason why they act in this way is actually because the opposite is true and they don't want you to know about it. It's a front. An act of opposition, hostility and defiance. But it is also a deceptive outward appearance and something that they must use as a means to protect themselves because they're paranoid. They fear a more vulnerable side of them may be at risk of danger or harm. Because there are actually unexpected things that can surprise and upset them. One, when you remain indifferent, when you have no particular interest or sympathy towards them, when you act unconcerned. When you're not thinking about them, when you're not chasing after them, when you're not worried about what they're doing. This really shocks them because everything they do is designed to elicit a reaction. They view people as objects and they assume that everyone wants them. So when you remain indifferent, it challenges their delusion and then it makes them question their worth because their false character isn't even real. It's not based on anything that is actually grounded in reality. It's just something that they've created in their minds. So it's dependent on other people's validation. Without that, it ceases to exist. And then it resurfaces their insecurities to where they end up hating you because they don't want to reflect on their insecurities. So they will get mad and they may even try to provoke you because they're desperately seeking a response from you to validate the illusion and to suppress the insecurities because that's all that it's designed to do. But when you remain indifferent, it invalidates their false self. Two, when you catch them off guard, When you surprise them by doing something they don't expect, it really catches them off guard. Because they like predictability. They like it when they know in advance what is going to happen. Rather than things happening in a way that they don't expect, because then it's easier for them to control you. Which is why they tend to do things with full awareness of the likely consequences. They plan and coordinate things in advance to produce a particular effect, so then they know if they give you a distinct and unusual scripted response, it's going to elicit an interconnected reaction, which is related and associated with what they said to you. Because they have no use for you as a separate and sovereign individual, as they specifically targeted you because of your power and worth, so that could be unfavorable for them. Instead, they want you to be under their control. They want you to be their robot. A machine that still resembles a human being, but is able to replicate reactions automatically and at will to suit their personal wishes and needs because it gives them this emotional high at their disposal, which is available for them to use whenever and however they wish. And in that moment, it makes them feel like their false character is real because when they can dial up certain emotions within you, it makes them feel like they own you, like you are their possession because they've exercised dominion and control over you, which is really just another means to suppress their own insecurities.
but over time they begin to learn you they begin to learn how to make you angry or how to make you sad and then they already know what you're going to do if they make you act a certain way because by that point you're not being your authentic self you're not thinking before you act you're doing something in response to what they've said or done or you're doing it to solve a problem so they already know what you're going to say or do before you even do it because they already know that once they pull you out of alignment with your core identity there's very few things that you can do in response to that but it is also possible for you to catch them off guard by doing something at the latest possible opportunity where they're unable to read you and when you do that it will really shock them because they won't be prepared for it and when you do something that they're not prepared for it puts them at risk of being exposed which hinders, delays and weakens them because they don't have anything outside of the illusion unless they've already prepared for it so they won't even know how to deal with it because when there's no predictability they have no control three when you reject them if there's one thing narcissists hate it's when you reject them they want to be the ones who dispose of you like an object they can't stand the thought of you overlooking their existence and that's why they are the way that they are it's why they have to act so impressive and opposing because the last thing they want is to be overlooked as just another person which is why if you reject them you can be sure that it will leave them questioning their worth and importance because they want to believe that they're all powerful and accessible and protected or exempt from an obligation or the effects of something but when you leave them that is what initiates the following series of events it's not because they want to change or because they're trying to get you back it's because you've already caused a narcissistic injury by rejecting them and now they're trying to use you as a band-aid for their wounds to show themselves that they're not as worthless and insignificant as they felt by you rejecting them which is why you shouldn't even waste your time by giving them another chance because that's all you're ever going to be to them they're just looking for someone to soothe their bruised ego four when you confront them narcissists go to extreme lengths to convince people of everything that they're not and of all of the things that they will never be which is why it is very shocking for them when you confront them especially when you draw critical attention to their unacceptable behaviors and actions because they can't understand how you can see beneath their mask this false persona which everyone else falls for and when you have this ability to see right through them it will make you a target where they will start a smear campaign against you and enforce their flying monkeys no matter what part of the world you're from they always do the exact same thing they're often very predictable they follow the same patterns of behavior which is why it's so easy for me to identify and accurately describe the narcissist in your life even though I have never met them in person five when you cut off your supply narcissists need supply they cannot survive without it and at times they won't even care if it's positive or negative as long as they're getting some form of an acknowledgement or recognition whether it's your admiration and validation or your anger and resentment as long as there's something for them to depend on because they're very insecure so they need your emotional reaction to feel in control they're like parasites or emotional vampires they cling to people of wealth, power or influence 
while they are useless to society. So they need you far more than you need them. In fact, you don't need them at all. Your life would have been far greater if you never got involved with them. So if you cut off your supply and you act dull and uninteresting, they experience narcissistic collapse. When they feel extremely anxious, depressed and ashamed. And that is when they may try to ramp up the abuse. Because they're in desperate need to get to the from you. While some narcissists may just leave you alone. And try to find another source of supply because they need something to sustain them. And the more boring you are, the more it just drives them away. Because they can't deal with them having a lack of influence or power over you. Six, when you move on without them. The narcissist wants you to be dependent on them at all times. They want you to remain under their control forever. They want you to feel like something is wrong with you. Because the last thing they want is to see you break free from their grasp. They want you to doubt yourself. They want you to think negative. But when you release that, you find your freedom. Because you're no longer tied to this person who lacked empathy for you. And when that happens, it weakens and harms them. Because the last thing they want is to see you stand up for doing something well. It affects their influence and control over you. So when you heal and you move on from the narcissist, they see it as though you've got the better of them. And it makes them feel very insecure. It makes them question themselves. Because before you did that, they thought they had unlimited power. They thought they knew everything there was to know. Seven, when you forget about them, when you live your life independently and you no longer need their help for anything, it will really shock them, especially when they can see that you're doing far better without them, then they know that they didn't succeed in destroying you because instead the experience made you stronger and wiser, which in their minds means that something went wrong because their tactics did not have the desired effect. Their attempts to destroy you failed. And not only that, but you still don't want or need them because you're living your best life as the best version of yourself. You're happy, positive, productive and independent, which shocks the narcissist. And it is the ultimate revenge for everything that they did to you. But when you do that, you do need to be very cautious and self-protective because it will make them feel very insecure as their false sense of pride and self-esteem is tied to how you're doing and how you feel. So for them to feel regulated, they have to keep you down and control you. Which is why if you move on and you start doing better without them, you should expect a hoover or some form of attack. Narcissists don't take it too well. When this person that they have manipulated into being this object that exists to serve them and meet their needs sprouts legs and starts doing things for themselves, especially when they're doing it well. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one on one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.